Hi guys, Sak Studio here and for today we are going to share on how we do our daytime exterior rendering in Lumion. For this video, we will be focusing on the Lumion rendering effects. If you are interested in figuring out on how to do Lumion models similar to this one, just comment down below. For the Lumion model that we will be using on this video, it will be posted in our Gumroad website which is called NHK3. You can download the Lumion model for free or you can donate any amount of money because why not? So much. The version of NHK3 is Lumion 10, so only people with Lumion 10 or higher versions of Lumion will be able to open the model. So here is the exterior Lumion model of NHK3. It's a small casita that has a Mediterranean design. When capturing exterior scenes in Lumion, we usually put a lot of trees behind the camera or in front of the exterior model. This is so that the trees would create overcasting shadows from the sun and it would also cover the horizon. For this Lumion model, we are going to set the editor quality into low. This is to lessen the lag a bit. Let's click the camera icon and there should be a captured image already in set. Focal length should be 25 points. Millimeters. Now for the rendering effects, let's add the real skies effects first. Let's click the box option here, then go to morning tab and choose morning tree. Let's set the heading to negative 98.2 degrees. Brightness should be 2 or maximum. Overall brightness would be 2 or maximum. Okay, this is good. After the real skies, let's add the skylight effects. Brightness should be 1.5 and saturation would be good at 1. Skylight in planar reflections and skylight in projected reflection should be on and render quality should be set to ultra. After the skylight, let's add the sun effects. Sun height should be 45.6 degrees. Sun heading would be negative 43.2 degrees. And sun brightness would be 0.8. After the sun, let's add the reflection effects. Reflection threshold should be 25 centimeters or maximum and speed ray reflections should be on. Preview quality should be low for now because putting it in high might cause some lag. Let's click this pencil tab so that we could select the surfaces that are highly glossy or reflective. Alright, this is good. After the reflection, let's add the shadow effects. Sun shadow range would be 390 meters. Coloring would be 2.5. Brightness would be 0.1. Interior exterior would be 0.1 as well. Omni shadow would be 0.5. Shadow correction would be 1 or maximum. Shadow type should be normal. Soft shadows and fine detail shadows should be on. Okay, this is good enough. After the shadow, let's add the hyper light effects. Let's set the amount to 65.4%. And enable preview should be on. On. After the hyperlight, let's add the global illumination effects. The default setting for the global illumination is already good and would do for our scene. After the global illumination, let's add the print poster enhancer effects. Enabled should be on. After the print poster enhancer, let's add the fog effects. Fog density should be 1.2. Fog fall off is okay at 0. Let's adjust the fog brightness to 1 or maximum. Brightness should also be maximum. Alright, this is good enough. After the fog, let's add the lens flare effects. The default setting for the lens flare is already good so we don't have to change anything for this one. After the lens flare, let's add the color correction effects. Temperature should be 0.2, tint should also be 0.2, vibrance would be 0.1, brightness should be 0.7, contrast would be 0.5, saturation should be 1, gamma correction is also 1, limit low is 0, and limit high is 1. After the color correction, let's add the exposure effects. Exposure would be good at 0.6. After the exposure, let's add the sharpen effects. Intensity should be 0.1. After the sharpen, let's add the bloom effects. Amount would be good at 0.3. After the bloom, let's add the autumn colors effects. The default setting for the autumn colors is already good. After the autumn colors, let's add the chromatic aberrations effects. Dispersion should be 0.1. Affected area would be 1. And the safe shadows should be 0. And that is pretty much it for the lumen rendering effects. Let's now render this image. Let's use the print size or 3840 by 2160 so that the image would be able to handle the post-production process as well. For the post-production process of this visualization, we will be making a separated tutorial video for that. We hope that you've learned something new from this video. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.